So today I'm gonna to show you how to fix white balance problems in your footage after the fact. Now, it's always best to get your white balance in camera because that's one of the hardest things to fix after in post, uh, especially when you're working with footage that isn't captured on a raw, in a raw video format. So this footage that I'm gonna work with today and show you was from an A7S III, so it is 10-bit color footage, but the same principles apply pretty much for most non-raw footage. And some is actually still recoverable even if you film in the wrong white balance. So I'm gonna switch back to my main screen here. And the situation today was that I filmed this wedding and they had the overhead lights on in the reception, er, in the ceremony hall, but there were some windows on the side with daylight coming in. And the problem was when we started um, the day and I was setting up, the light coming in was much, much brighter. But because it was a cloudy day and it was in winter, the day actually ended much earlier than I anticipated. So uh, as you can see here, what ended up happening is when I had my white balance to match what I thought was going to be the dominant light source, which were the windows, uh, which is generally what you're supposed to do with some exceptions, um, that changed and I didn't have time to, to catch my mistake. And so I filmed it in in the wrong white balance. I filmed in 5600 Kelvin when I should have been filming in about 3200 Kelvin because the overhead lights were basically tungsten white balance. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So check this out. So I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. And as you can see, that looks much, much better. Now, keep in mind, this is a color correction. This is to correct the footage to get it to look natural. I have not applied a grade to the footage yet. Um, and I don't, I'm not gonna do a tutorial on that. I actually made a, a tutorial a couple of videos ago showing you how to do that. So this is just to color correct the footage to get it to look um, as if it were filmed in the proper white balance for the lighting scenario. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my timeline here and I'm going to duplicate the clip and then I'm going to come back to my color tab. Now, as I'm working in this clip, I'm gonna turn my clips back on uh, so I can see here, I'm going to go ahead and just remove those two nodes and then reset this node so that we're back to square one. And I can show you from start to finish how I color corrected the footage. Now, most editing software, which by the way, these same principles apply for most software. Um, it can do it just as well as, as you know me working inside of DaVinci Resolve. Um, however, this tutorial is specific to DaVinci Resolve. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over down here to the temperature slider and you are going to compensate to get it to look roughly how you think um, it should look, which in my case was about 3,800 or oh, 34, I think is as far as I went on the other clip. So it was about 3,400. Now uh, that actually already makes it look quite a bit better uh, because I'm uh, it's, it's not raw footage, but because of the A7S's 10-bit uh, color, I do have a little more flexibility and there's more color data. Um, so when I adjust things like tint and temperature after the fact, it does tend to look a little bit better. So um, I that's a good start. But when uh, her, her father's walking her down the aisle, but you can see here when they step into the window light right here, the dress starts to look a little bit blue. It's like a blue white and it doesn't look super good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a node, just a corrector. Um, and in this second node, and you can rename it if you like, but um, so maybe just put it as um, white, I can't type today, white fix. So I'm just fixing the, the bright areas, the white areas in the scene, because when you just use the temperature slider inside of most editing software, generally speaking, um, the things that get messed up the most are the whites and, uh, and like some of the, the colors in like the highlights and stuff. That's usually what tends to look the most unnatural. So uh, this is gonna be called white fix. And from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come to my color picker right here. Qualifier is what it's called. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm gonna grab the brightest part of the dress. Now you can see that inside my node, there is a, a little preview of what the node is doing, but that's really, really small, super small. Now I can, 
uh, I can enlarge in it so that I have a, a slightly larger view of what's happening, but it's still a little too small. So I'm going to show you how to uh, bring up a screen that actually fits, um, shows you what you're doing. Uh, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on split screen right here. Okay. Now I already have highlight, highlighted modes selected right here, but you may need to change it to highlighted modes because it might be on a different mode by default, but highlighted modes is um showing you the the changes that you're going to make um, which will appear here and then it's going to show you the uh the areas that you're affecting only and then it's going to show you the areas you're affecting but monochrome so just black and white so you have an idea of, of where in the scene is being affected by this so now that i have qualified for the dress um and some of the other areas in the scene that are white i need to adjust the range for the qualifier so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab the first dial, which is the hue. And you shouldn't have to change this too much, maybe a little bit to grab more of those blues and purples, just like that. Okay. And then saturation, I'm going to pull a little more saturation out of it and a little more from the gray areas. See, now you can see if I zoom in on this one, which I probably should have done to begin with. If I zoom in on this one, you can see that I'm grabbing more of those gray areas that have blue in them. Okay and then luminance so i'm going to uh, zoom out so i can just see my two um, i'm going to select pretty much up until the top end for luminance and then i'm going to keep going down until i hit something that probably shouldn't be changed in, in regards to white balance so so you can see with my luminance as i drag it down it's starting to grab other people's clothes in the scene and other area black areas and maybe you want to adjust those too but for our purposes today, I don't want to grab those. So I'm going to go until I do not see that being affected anymore. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to soften it up a little bit. Now, uh, I believe this is a recent update inside of uh, Resolve, but they have actually put some of the softness uh, controls in each channel, which is really nice. So right here, um, I increase the softness for the hue and I think I misspoke I think this is a feature that was here before it's just that you had to grab the controls on the screen rather than using the sliders so that's actually nice okay I'm gonna make that softer and then also I'm going to make these a bit softer as well okay and then I'm also going to come down here and use denoise and denoise will also soften it quite a bit so that you don't get that um, flickering <laughs> Uh, in in some of the areas that you're seeing so you, you don't want that so this looks like a pretty good uh, overall selection now that I've made my selection and I have my white fix node selected as well I'm going to come down here and I'm not going to mess with pretty much anything except for saturation so I'm going to turn off my split screen so that it just fills up back up and then I'm going to do fit to screen so that I'm working with this I'm also going to turn off my clips so that you can uh, get a, a better idea of what I'm doing here. So I'm going to zoom in on the dress and I'm going to come down to saturation and I'm going to decrease that until it looks more white. And that's already looking much, much better. So you can see if I uh, want to show you the before and after, you can see how much blue I'm actually removing from the scene, right? Um, and so it's making her dress look much, much, much whiter it's not like a weird blue color and if i want to i could also uh increase the overall luminance of the dress if i want it to stand out a bit more so i can increase the luminance and kind of make it stand out uh, and that wouldn't look too bad either so now you can see the before and after it's already looking significantly better we went from this really yellowy mess um, from those overhead lights to a much more pleasing looking scene okay but we're not quite done yet i'm going to actually add one more node so I'm going to add a node. It's going to be a corrector right here. Okay. And this corrector, I'm going to label as, um, I think it's going to be the red slash orange. Oh boy. I cannot, <laughs> I can't type today. Red slash orange fix. Okay. So the red and orange fix. Now, what I'm going to do here with this node is I'm going to come over to one of my new favorite features in Resolve 17. It's been out for a while now, but this is, I love this feature so much. 
and it is the color warper and it's kind of this spider web looking thing it's a really easy way to make very quick adjustments to your scene so what i want to adjust is these areas around here they're kind of a these areas in the skin tones kind of have a green cast to them so i don't know if you can see on her shoulders it's kind of a green cast and then in the floor as well it's kind of a green cast and that may have been somewhat close to the actual color of the walls and stuff in the venue but i want to do some correction on that to make it look more pleasing and natural to the eye so i guess this is kind of a correction and a grade at the same time if you will so what i'm going to do is inside of my color warper i'm going to grab the yellows and without increasing the saturation too much so this line right here i can try to follow this line and move it towards the oranges just a bit you can already see how much better that is looking so if i do it before and after you can see how yellow the image looks and now you can see how much more natural it looks Okay, and I may have even gone just a little too far, right? Subtlety is key, so I'm gonna bring that back just a hair, just like that. And now, now our now our clip is has been fully corrected, and it is ready to be graded. So I could, you know, um, let's say if I wanted to grade it real quick, just throw a corrector on here, and then um, make sure that my editable splines is selected, and then just add like a quick. S curve to it, right? Um, like this, and maybe even bring in, bring out more of those uh, mid tones like that. And you know, you get the gist. You know, start adding a grade. Maybe add some, bring out the oranges a bit more. So I could, you know, select these and I could increase the luminance, but also saturate them just a bit more. And you know, to my liking, I can I can uh, go for kind of a grade. But it's it's incredible what kind of power you have um, if you use the qualifier tool to go from this to this. And by the way, similar principles apply if your footage was filmed in the wrong white balance on the other end of the spectrum, uh, right? But in that case, what you would have to do is select the whites and remove, rather than removing blueness out of them, you'd be removing some of the orange out of them. And that would be a little trickier because that'll mesh with your skin tones. So you may have to do some wizardry there, but the same principles apply. So let me switch back to this. I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Uh, like, Please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, even hit that notification bell. Uh, that way you're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. That way you can get... Um, well, these tutorials and uh, help you out when you need just these little quick tips. So a bit of a longer video today. I know I've been going for just a bit longer, but I feel like this is really crucial and very important uh, to anybody, any filmmaker's kit. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.